Church of God presents Michael H. Venish, bringing you the plain truth of measuring the Church of God. And now, Michael Venish. Greetings, brethren and friends around the world, and welcome to this new series of videos by the Vigilant Church of God, titled Measuring the Church of God. And I also want to welcome all those scattered brethren in those various groups around this world as well. Jesus Christ, talking about a hypocritical ministry, said in Matthew chapter 10, verse 26, Fear them not, therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, and hid that shall not be known. What I tell you in darkness, that speak you in light, and what you hear in the ear, that preach you upon the housetops. Jesus is saying what he reveals will be known like one shouting it out from the housetop. So nothing that is hid in these churches of God is going to be stay hid. They won't be secret anymore. You know, about three months ago, I found out that a minister friend I knew from the Worldwide Church of God in South Africa was living in Walterboro, South Carolina, and that he was a minister in the Living Church of God. We live approximately three hours away, which is you know, not too far to drive, to visit a friend, share a cup of tea or a cup of coffee. Well, I sent him an email asking him if we could come for a visit and renew our friendship. Now, I've known this man for a number of years, and I respected and admired him for his commitment to the truth and the doctrines taught by Jesus Christ through his late apostle. This man used to always say when we used to do things in the church, Mike, the Ambassador College Standard, it has to be the right standard, God's standard. However, to my surprise and shock, I received a one-liner email back from this uh, so-called minister stating the following. I hope you understand, Michael. We have moved on in our life and have new friends. We're not about to renew our friendship with you. How sad is that, brethren, like stabbing me with a knife in my heart? This man has the responsibility given to him by the leader of the living church of God to teach the members of that church. This so-called minister should know what Jesus Christ taught about friends and family, about neighbors. He turns his back on Christ. Notice what Jesus Christ said. You shall love the eternal, your God, with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. That's Luke chapter 10, verse 27, and many other verses like that. This is the type of individuals occupying space as ministers in the living church of God. Another example of a man in uh, Restore Church of God. There was a man living in Ringgold, Georgia, or lives there, who is disabled. He had to ride on a scooter 157 miles to Nashville, Tennessee, to be baptized by a minister of the Restored Church of God. Can you believe that? A man claiming that he's a minister of Jesus Christ will sit at home and allow a disabled man to ride all that way, a round trip of about 340 miles, on a scooter? Why couldn't he get off his backside and go and visit the man and baptize him at his own home? This poor man on his return journey had an accident. Let me tell you, brethren, I received many letters from people associated with these scattered churches of God. And they lead me to believe there is a terrible time of peril coming upon these scattered churches and their ministry for the way they are being treating, the way they're treating the, the members. Jesus Christ, through his prophet Ezekiel, cries out to all in the churches of God, including their deceitful leaders, and Ezekiel is discussing the manner of conduct and standard which they were taught in the Philadelphia era by Jesus Christ. Notice Ezekiel 43 verse 10. You son of man, show the house the house to the house of Israel, the spiritual Israel, that they may be ashamed of their lawlessness 
and let them measure the pattern of the house. And if they be ashamed of all that they have done, show them the form of the house, that's the temple, and the fashion thereof, and the goings out thereof, and the coming in thereof, and all the forms thereof, and all the ordinances thereof, and all the forms thereof, and all the laws thereof, and write it in their sight, that they may keep the whole form thereof, and all the ordinances thereof, and do them. This is the law of the house. Upon the top of the mountain, the whole limit thereof, round about shall be most holy. Behold, this is the law of the house. Mr. Herbert Armstrong came with the truth about why Jesus Christ is building a church. The church of God is holy. And these men are sacrificing the members. These hundreds of scattered groups claiming to be churches of God have turned their back. On Mr. Herbert Armstrong's teachings and instructions, they all need to go and read and study Mystery of the Ages and get back to the faith God called us into and to the proper government of God established by Christ, back to the standards and back to the traditions that were established in the church. The work that was done by Mr. Armstrong during the Philadelphia era is over. But these leaders refuse to listen or to hear what was said to them by Mr. Armstrong or what is revealed in the scriptures. Look at what, uh, just look brethren, what God allowed to happen to Ambassador College. I, I get choked up about this. Even what was once named the house of God is no more. That beautiful auditorium, it's gone, given to the Gentiles. But these men do not hear Christ. They do not hear Him. They are too busy with their own agendas, even copying the work of an era that is over. Some say they are raising the ruins of that era. Another says He's building the grand pattern. And by all this, brethren, they lead their people astray with all these false proclamations and as well as a different gospel. The end of their work is going to be disastrous for all of them. As I said, these scattered groups who now claim to be working for Christ are actually hiding the truth about the era they are actually working in. And that era is Laodicea. Jesus Christ is about to spew them out, to spit them all into the tribulation unless they repent. Repent, brethren, go back to that faith that was once delivered. These men embrace and teach a watered-down truth. They've changed and added doctrines to their own liking. One group, the Restored Church of God, wrote, rewrote all of Mr. Armstrong's books and labeled them as truth coming from the leader of that church. This is what they're doing. These groups, including deacons and laymen posing as ministers, have all turned away from the loving government of God. All of them. And that includes those self-proclaimed apostles and prophets that are sitting in the church of God. You know, John, a real apostle of Jesus Christ, was told in Revelation to wake up. To wake up and measure the church of God. Revelation 11 verse 1. And, it, and there was given me, John was told, John says, a reed like unto a rod. And the angel stood saying, rise, wake up John and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. Go right into the temple, the building. And this does not include the court of the priests or the inner court. Because John was told in Revelation 11 verse 2, but the court which is without the temple building, that is the inner court, or the court of the priests, leave it out. Measure it not, for it's given unto the Gentiles and the holy city. They shall tread underfoot forty and two months, three and a half years. The tribulation. Why? Because there are abominations being committed by the ministry in this court. 
And God wants you, brethren, to wake up from your lukewarmness and see, see what's happening in the church you are attending every Sabbath. Are you just warming a seat? Is it all just such a nice music to you? Brethren, Christ is offering you the opportunity to be His bride. Wake up! The inner court, or the court of the priests, is where the scattered churches of God are working today. And they are in terrible peril. Unless they repent and turn back to the unadulterated truth revealed by Christ to, through His late apostle, they will all go into the tribulation. It's going to happen, brethren. God showed through the prophet Ezekiel what is going on in the inner court. Go and study Ezekiel chapter 8. Notice verse 5 of that chapter. Then said he unto me, Son of man, lift up your eyes now the way toward the north. So I lifted up my eyes the way toward the north, and behold, northward at the gate of the altar, this image of jealousy right there in the inner court. He said, Furthermore unto me, Son of man, do you see what they're doing in the great abominations that the house of Israel commits here, spiritual Israel committing here in the inner court? that I should go far off from my sanctuary? But turn you yet again, and you shall see greater abominations that are creating desolation in the church. And he brought me to the door of the court, the inner court. And when I looked, behold, a hole in the wall. Then he said unto me, Son of man, dig. Dig now in the wall. And when I started digging in the wall, behold, a door. And he said unto me, Go in and behold the wicked abominations that they do here. So I went in and saw, and behold, every form of creeping thing, and abominable beasts, and all idols of the house of Israel portrayed upon the wall round about. Total worldliness in the church of God. And there stood before me seventy men of the ancients of the house of Israel, and in the midst of them stood Jazaniah, the son of Shaphan, with every man his censer in his hand. The prayers they were sending up to their idols, and a thick cloud of incense went up. Then said he unto me, Son of man, have you seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark? Every man in the chambers of his imagery, always in his mag imagination. For they say, the eternal sees us not. The eternal has forsaken the earth. Oh, we moved on. We're in a different year, a different time. He said also unto me, turn you yet again, and you shall see greater abominations that they do. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was towards the north. And behold, there sat woman weeping for Tammuz, Adonis. Yes, the women want to be back in the world. They want to be like the world in these churches. Then said he unto me, Have you seen this, O son of man? Turn you yet again, and you shall see greater abominations than these. And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house. And behold, at the door of the temple of the eternal, between the porch and the altar, were about five and twenty men with their backs toward the temple of the eternal. Yes, forget about the members and their faces towards the east, and they worship the sun toward the east. They are being influenced, brethren, by the God of this world, Satan, the spirit of error. Let's turn to Zechariah 8 and verse 9. Thus says the eternal hosts, Let your hands be strong, you in these days have been hearing these words from the mouth of the prophets or inspired man who were present on the day that the foundation of the house of the eternal of hosts was laid that the temple might be built and who laid the foundation in the 20th century was it any of you leaders no definitely not and you know it but you want to show off that you are now in charge I'm an apostle, or I'm a prophet, or I'm a president, or whatever title you want people in your church to hear and to bow down to you. And you want to stand in the place of Jesus Christ. I'm a high priest, one said. Now verse 16. 
These are the things that you should do. Speak the truth to one another. Render in your gates judgments that are true and make for peace. Do not devise evil in your hearts against one another. Love and love no false oath. For all these things I hate, declares the Eternal. We will continue in the next video with this series, Measuring the Churches of God. This is Michael Venish saying, Goodbye, friends, and thank you for listening.